I get so many different tech products to review on my channels here on YouTube, it's hard to be impressed by anything anymore. This thing right here though is the exception, the new BitBoy. I reviewed it on my channel a few days ago, you can check it out right there. Though it's definitely not perfect, I covered some of the issues in my review, I have been loving this thing so much. I love the aesthetic, I love the size. I've been diving so deep into the Game Boy library thanks to this thing. I love it. I love that it exists. But there are a few things that would have made this thing so, so much better. And I want to go over some of those right here because I know BitBoy is watching this and I really hope to see an improved version of the BitBoy next year that takes what is already great about the new BitBoy and improves on that. So, what could be a little bit better about the BitBoy? Let's take a look. <laughs> In case you didn't watch my original review of the BitBoy, I urge you to go watch it. I go over the device in a lot more detail than I'm going to in this video. In this video, I'm going to focus on the things that I think could still be improved if BitBoy decides to release a new model, maybe say next year. So the first thing is the screen. Now, from what you can see there, I'm sure you will agree this is a gorgeous screen. However, the resolution on the original Game Boy was 160 by 144. The resolution on the BitBoy, or I should say the new BitBoy, is 320 by 240, meaning the resolution on the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color don't scale perfectly. They're using non-integer scaling on this thing, which means that some areas of the graphics, the, the pixels are double and some they're not, which can create some weird looking images. That is to say, on games that you're actually very familiar with. One thing I'm noticing playing some games that I had never played before, this issue isn't as noticeable. But still, it's not perfect. I would have preferred something that allowed a more faithful reproduction of the graphics of the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Now, I understand why they went with this screen. They probably had to work with existing SKUs that are already in the market, and I'll bet there's nothing out there that fits the resolution of the Game Boy perfectly. Not something that's being manufactured right now, so they had to work with whatever they could get their hands on. I understand that. If they were to design their own LCDs, this thing would probably not be as cheap as it is. I should have prefaced this with saying I am not in any way an expert on the matters of hardware. So if I'm saying something here that doesn't make sense, please let me know in the comments. I want to learn more too. This is what I've been able to find. I don't know if this is directly related with the resolution issue or if it's a problem with the emulation or the actual screen hardware But there is a little bit of screen tearing as well. It's not awful There's some games that you barely even notice in some it's more noticeable than others. I'll give an example So in Pokemon, I'm sure you can see there's quite a bit of screen tearing now if you were to play this on original hardware this, even with the screen tearing, is a massive improvement because the screen on the original Game Boy was god-awful. But still, I would have preferred to see more smooth scrolling there. Again, I'm not sure if this is an artifact of the screen they used, of the kind of doubling that's going on here, if it's a software issue. I'm not sure what exactly causes this. I just know that I would like to not see it. The battery could be a little bit better. Now, this thing is using the GBA-SP battery, which packs 700 milliamp hour, which isn't terrible. You're going to get, you know, between three to five hours of screen time, which is comparable to, say, the 3DS. But then again, the 3DS is running two screens of high resolution 3D graphics. There's a lot more going on on the 3DS compared to something like this. I would love if this battery would last a little bit longer. Maybe a 1000 milliamp hour battery. Now again, I understand they're using SKUs and I, I said both ways, SKUs and SKUs because I keep hearing both on the internet. I'm not sure which one is right. And me saying things wrong is kind of a staple of this channel. So. Go away, tear me apart for saying it wrong. I said it wrong at least once. Anyway, they're using off-the-shelf stuff to build this thing, it seems, like the screen. I, I doubt they designed the screen themselves. The battery, right, it's the GBASB battery. So maybe this is just what they could get their hands on. A, a, that's a battery this size that fits in this little case they made. But again, I, I just would love if this thing had like something comparable to the Game Boy, like if it lasted some 10 hours on one charge, that'd be great. The biggest thing for me though, the biggest thing that hinders the potential of the BitBoy is the fact that it stops short 
at Game Boy Color. I would love, this thing would be unstoppable if it also emulated GBA. And especially considering that once you emulate GBA, there's a lot of SNES games that become available on the platform because a lot of them were ported for the GBA. And they could very well do GBA on this. These two turbo buttons here that you don't often use during normal gameplay and more often than not, you're using these to activate the brightness and volume controls. If this thing emulated GBA, these could easily be L and R. That would be amazing. If this thing emulated GBA, this would pretty I'd be confident in saying that this would pretty much be the perfect Game Boy clone. I'm not sure if the hardware on this thing is up for the task of emulating GBA. Again, I'm not a hardware guy, so I can't say, but this is a bit boy if you're watching, please, please, please. The next one or to whoever's working on the custom firmware on this thing, which is supposed to come out at some point, please give us GBA emulation. I swear to God, this thing is never leaving my pocket if it does GBA as well. Now, number four is something I didn't think would be an issue. I didn't think I was gonna miss this, but I actually do. It would be great if there was some kind of multiplayer on the BitBoy. Now, I understand multiplayer with emulation can get a little bit tricky, but there's some games that are just, it's an integral part of the gameplay, like Pokemon. You straight up can't be Pokemon, you can't get all Pokemon without being able to trade. So without multiplayer, it limits what you can do in the game. Now again, I understand emulation multiplayer is not an easy task, but can you imagine how awesome it would be if this thing did multiplayer? And finally, one thing the BitBoy is sorely missing is native saves. For some reason that I cannot understand, this is something I've never seen in my entire career covering emulators. This thing doesn't support native saves. Now, it has a save state feature, which I'm gonna show you here, check this out. If you press the R button here, you get that little menu, and the first option is save states. So you can save the game, but you can't natively save the game. So if you pause Pokemon and you try to save using the menu, if you reset the game, nothing has been saved. It's not a huge issue, but it can't be that hard to implement either. So what gives? Why doesn't it natively save? Anyway, like I said in the beginning, I love, I love this thing. It's a tiny, great Game Boy clone that is only a few steps short of being the greatest Game Boy clone. BitBoy is sending a lot of these units to my fellow content creators here on YouTube and I love to see all the videos people are making on this thing because I want this thing to succeed. I want it to sell a bunch of units so that maybe they'll give us something even better next year. As it is right now, I wholeheartedly recommend the new BitBoy. I am, like I said, I'm loving it. I seriously don't leave the house without this thing. And it's easy because it's, look at how small it is. It's like smaller than my wallet, which, are you surprised? It's also a Game Boy. Look at that. Look how tiny this thing is, man. I can't afford not to take it out with me wherever I go. To give you an idea of how small the BitBoy is, up until recently, my most compact emulation device was my PSP Go. I can put it in my breast pocket like this, but as you can see, it kind of sticks out a little bit. This, on the other hand, is how the BitBoy goes into a breast pocket. Look at that, it's, it's gone. It's so small. But that's how I feel the BitBoy could be improved. What do you think? Did you love the system? Did you hate it? Are you getting one? Are you skipping it for something better? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, follow me on social media. That helps me so much because, as you know, YouTube sometimes doesn't notify my subscribers that I put out new stuff. So if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you'll always know there's new stuff out. Let me know in the comments down below where you're watching these videos from. I'm always fascinated to find out where you guys are from. It always blows me away that I have people from areas of the world I never even dreamed would be watching me and we kind of had the same childhood. It's a while to me to listen to your stories of growing up wherever you're from and kind of coming across gaming and stuff like that. I, I love to read that stuff. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. 99 Vitas, my indie game based on my Brazilian gaming podcast of the same name, is now available on the Switch which is my favorite way to play the game. 99 Vidas, which by the way means 99 lives in Portuguese, is a 16-bit inspired street brawler in the style of classics like Captain Commando or Streets of Rage. There are tons of unlockable characters, bonus levels, challenging boss fights, 
there's an online mode. We put a lot of thought and work into 99 Vitas and I think you will find that it shows. I did my own voice acting and everything. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but the soundtrack on this thing alone is worth the price of admission in my opinion. Just like every other Switch fan out there, we hate the so-called Switch tax, where indie games land on the eShop with a higher price point than their Steam versions. So 99 Vitas is actually cheaper on the Switch than on Steam right now, only $10. And hey, don't just take my word for it. There's a demo for you to try it free. So go to the eShop right now and download 99 Vitas. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.